Hello Commerce, so today we're going to learn about inheritance. We already have an example of inheritance here. So transport inherits from Monday behavior. Monday behavior basically holds everything that we need from Unity. And transport is the name of the class that I created. And that's how you say that something inherits from something. So transport inherits from Monday behavior. And you will need it. For various reasons, inheritance is very useful, and let's, let's see why. So first of all, now you can actually understand private, public, and protected. Remember, I said that you probably want to use public as a beginner, and here you will get a little bit better understanding of why you might need to use private or protected. So we have private speed, length, width, and cost. Private variables by default are not shown in editor. So if you want to show them in editor, you have to put serialize field attribute on top of it. So this speed will be shown in editor. And if I select something, you can see the speed here. All right. So uh, we have method start and it will print default start text on transport and it will also print it on every single children of transport and it doesn't matter if it's a first children or a second children because you can basically inherit from transport that will be a second children of mono behavior then you can inherit from this children from this child and it will be more and more levels of ch uh, children whatever yeah so this is our basic class, what's called, or base class. Uh, this is where everything starts to inherit from in our structure. So we create the transport and let's divide it more. So we have wheeled transport. Wheeled transport will have everything from here. So it will have speed, length, width, and cost. And even the start but you won't be able to do anything with these values. Like here, I cannot access the speed. You see, it doesn't exist. So if you do speed equals four, it says transport.speed is inaccessible due to its protection level. How can I change it? I can change it to protect it. And you can see that now it is accessible. So what's the difference between private and protected? Private is not accessible from anywhere outside of this class where it's declared. So it will be accessible only here. Protected will be accessible here and in any class that inherits from transport. You can see that will transport inherits from transport. So I can access speed here once I change it to protect it. Nothing private can be accessed. Like length. See, it's not here. All right. And you can give some parameters, uh, which will be specific. Uh, I mean, variables, which will be specific to the, inherit, uh, the class that, is, that inherited from tra transport. Like will transport will have wheels. Not all transport will have wheels, but wheel transport will. And another type that we can use here is ships. So ships can also inherit from transport and they don't have any wheels. They both have speed, length, uh, width and cost. So here and here it has some values for it. You can't really modify it from any of these classes, but you can write some methods that will allow you to do that later. That's not the point here. It's more about showing how it works in general. So we have wheel transport and ships, and only wheel transport will have wheel number because ships don't have any. We'll get back to ships later. But let's deal with wheel transport. Uh, I separated it further. 
So we have two wheel transport and four wheel transport. We can see that wheel number is protected. That means that any child can exit it. So two wheel transport inherits from wheel transport. So it has access to wheel number. Also, since we changed speed to protect it, it has access to speed. You see? Each uh, of these two classes has its own start method. And we saw that transport has its start, but when we actually use two wheel transport, we will use its own start. So whatever is written after, like we had here start, let's say we had here start and we had here start. The last one will be used. So if we use two wheel transport, then we use its start. But in case of wheel transport, since we didn't write any start function here, what it will do, it will use the one from the parent. So whatever, whatever parent has, unless we somehow overridden it, it will be used. So these things will be used in wheel transport, except for update. So if in update we say speed is equal to four, and then we actually attached wheel transport script to something, the update will be empty. Basically, the update on the children ignores the update on the parent. But if we remove update on the wheel transport, then update from the parent will be used and the speed will be set to 4 in update all the time. All right. So we have two and four wheel transport and each one of them sets the correct number of wheels uh, per type. And we can inherit even more. So for four wheel transport, we can have a car and it can have its own variable is engine sign lit. And it won't be accessible from anywhere outside this car. This start will override this start. So that's actually bad because the car won't have this wheel number set to four. How we can fix it? We can actually just remove start. And then we will use this one from the direct parent because car inherits from four wheel transport. There are some times where you want to keep both and basically use one from parent and add some stuff later, but I will show it to you later how to do it. And for two wheel transport, we can have a bike and a scooter. I have nothing really speci specific implemented for them. I just want to show that you can basically extend this inheritance for as much as you want. Uh, like you can have a tank uh, in your game and you can have 10 different types of tanks. They will all have different models, different functions, and that's a good example of where you can inherit. So the tank in general will have something, and then every specific tank will have an addition over it. All right, let's go to chips. Here I will explain with more. Uh, so we have protected amount of crew and we have a ship name. So remember I said that bike has start, it's empty and basically it will ignore this one. So whenever you have a bike, the wheel number will not be set because this one will be overwritten by this one. But if you, what if you want to use both? So here is how we do it. We declare a function virtual. Uh, virtual would mean basically that inside, like if you have a ch child of this class, ships inherit from transport and carrier and yacht inherit from ships. So in carrier or yacht, if you want to use your parent class uh, function plus some addition, you can 
override it. So to make a function virtual, you add virtual between access modifier and the return type. And to override it, at the same place you put override. Access modifier has to be the same, so public public. And what it does here, it prints welcome to and ship name. What I do here is string interpolation. So if you put a dollar sign in front of the string, then in curly brackets you can put the names of the uh, ships, well, of, of the variables. So our variable ship name will be directly inserted here. And the default value for every ship is stupid ship. But it won't be printed because of the way I structured the things. So what I do here, I override my start. I change the name for the carrier to carry on my. And then I call the base. Calling the base means that I will call the parent. And I will call start on the parent. I can also call base. Uh, what, what can I call? What does it have? Well, let's make update public. So I can call update and on start it will call update. Or I can call any other function more or less that I will create. Alright, so what it will do, uh, it will just go to ships and execute this. That's why I need to first change the name and then it will print my newly assigned name. Remember we have ship name in our ships and we don't have it here, but since it's actually declared in a parent, in, inside parent, we inherit this property from the parent. So every ship, whatever ship you create, it will have a name. Carrier and yacht, they both have names. So when we run the game, our start will change the name on the carrier to carry on my, and it will print it. Same with yacht, it will change the name of the yacht to beda or beda, and it will start the start method on ships, which will print this name. It will be welcome to carrier, uh, well, welcome to carry on my, and welcome to beda. Also, we can see that I added some private parameter on the children. So number of sales because Yacht has sales, for example, and it will be again accessible only here, nowhere else. Another thing that I can show you uh, is how to access this private stuff. Like, for example, you want to access these numbers, but you don't want uh, to give access to every single person in the world. I know that uh, concept of giving and not giving access to some somebody uh, might look weird right now, especially when you're just starting. But the more and more you go into professional programming and start working with other people, uh, this concept become very, very important. Uh, the general rule is if this thing is not used anywhere outside, it should be private. Uh, if this thing is used only in children uh, or inside this uh, class where it's declared, uh, then it should be protected. If it requires the access from outside, uh, then it should be either public or it should be private but with getter and setter. And here is what I want to show you. It's kind of a getter function. I will show you properties in uh, next video, but for now I will just show you a trick kind of how to access the private thing. What you have to do, you have to declare your private thing, which in my case will be a list of carried units. And this carried units is only accessible from inside this class. But 
we can create a function which will have return type of this list game object, the same type of this variable carried unit. And we call it get carried units list. And what it does, it just returns to whoever asks, whoever, because it's public, whoever asks, it return carried units. So if we have on our yacht, which is a sibling for our carrier, it's not a child or a parent, uh, we have a public carrier, our carrier. So we have a reference to our carrier. Um, we cannot get the list of carried units. You can see that it's not available, but we can just call get carryable units list. And it will return us a list so we can store it as list of game objects carrier carry it units so after calling this uh, public function which will return us private variable we can access private variable from outside of the class we get a copy of it, we don't really uh, get the full control of it, but we can read it, which is usually good enough. All right, and let's just try to run the game. So I have my objects bike, car, carrier, scooter and yacht. You can see that they have some different parameters here like carrier for example has list of carried units and every single one of them has a speed because it's serialized fields inside the transport their general parent which shares this attribute among all of them it doesn't share like it, every single one of them has the same value but every single one of them has its own field for that so they can fill their value for it all right so let's start and what it should do it should print oh we have an error because I edit on the yacht our carrier and I'm trying to exit it but I haven't actually assigned anything we don't need it anymore it was just for demo let's see so clear and let's start all right, I started, I stopped the game, and here's what we print. Welcome to carry on my, and welcome to Bida. That happens because we have this printing method on start, which is virtual, and we have two ships, carrier and yacht, and both of them override the start, change the name to its own name, Bida in case of yacht, and carry on my in case of carrier, and they call the base to print the current name and current name for each one of them is different because carrier changed it to carry on my and yacht changed it to bida so the default one stupid ship was overwritten before we actually start printing if we don't override the name and just call the base what it will do it will print stupid ship for the things that didn't override it because the default value is set, was set in parent. All right, I think that's it for today. I know this concept is a little bit confusing for the beginner, but it's very important to understand it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe for the uh, next tutorials. I will make more of them and I will try to explain everything in the most details possible. And see you in the next video.